And then a red light starts working when I see something that I feel it's, it's good to a tapestry. Uh, by cooperation between a craftsman and an artist, I think that the craftsmanship achieves a higher level and higher quality. If the craftsman is ambitious and he really likes art, then he takes it as a challenge and he says, why not try to do almost the impossible? And then by effort and by hard work, he does it. His name is uh, Richard Kellner from Philadelphia. He was recommended to me by a good friend and uh, he sent me some slides. And I looked at those slides and I liked them and I thought that uh, his work is uh, fitting very much for tapestries, although they are very difficult to execute. And then I uh, wrote him that I am ready and uh, he came and he is now staying with us. We're uh, working here in Ein Hod, a village in Israel, about a 20-minute ride from Haifa. Uh, Ein Hod looks down on the Mediterranean from a cluster of olive groves in the uh, Mount Carmel foothills. A quarter of a century ago, the uh, Moorish streets and buildings were deserted and in ruins, uh, abandoned by the Arabs. Uh, the village was reclaimed by uh, Marcel Yanko, the Dadist artist and a group of Israeli painters and craftsmen and writers, musicians, uh, dancers and poets. And today, only artists and their families may live here. Ein Hod means well of beauty. And every street is a reflection of the uh, citizens who have made this a community of, of working artists. You see very few people on the streets. There are no shops, only homes and a small restaurant cafe and a gallery, and a very fine gallery, and the studios of the artists. Yet the village is alive with creative activity. To find it, you must go beyond the stone walls to places like the workshop of Itzhak Mambush, master potter and ceramicist, silkscreen printer, and maker of tapestries. <laughs> It was here, in the uh, workshops of Mambush, that I began to learn something of uh, his philosophy uh, of the uh, relationship between the craftsman and the uh, artist. A good artist really knows what he wants, and if we understand him well, this is our main line, the faithfulness to the ideas of the artist to understand what the artist want and to cooperate uh, as much as possible. Otherwise, you are, you are not doing a real piece of art. I think that it's true that craft is a whole world for itself, and it has uh, tremendous richness. But uh, by cooperation between a craftsman and an artist, I think that the craftsmanship achieves a higher level and higher quality. It enriches me by working with good artists, and uh, I think that we help the artists too. It takes two days just to prepare the warp for the uh, weaving of a tapestry. It's when you see that fully prepared warp uh, stretch like an empty canvas waiting for the first brush strokes that the painter fully realizes just how much help that he'll need from a master like Mambush. Because a Mambush tapestry isn't simply the artist's canvas translated to a different medium. Rather, it's, it's an entirely new and completely different work of art. I think that the tapestry is not only a piece of art. I think that the tapestry is uh, part, a real part of the environment that uh, people are living in. The tapestry is a part of a wall. 
and it's a kind of also uh, furniture. It's a, like a chair. A chair, you, you are part of it when you sit on it. The red light starts working when I see something that I feel it's a good to a tapestry. At the, the beginning, it's a feeling. It has to be not only artistically valued, it has to be decorated, it has to be, in Hebrew tapestry, we call shatiach. Shatiach comes from the word shetach, surface. It has to be a compact surface, like a surface of a wall. You have to take into account many, many things. It's a very complicated decision. I had uh, prepared a cartoon, that's a uh, diagram for the weavers to follow, before I came to Ein Hod. But when I got here, I began to understand more of the craft of tapestry, and I saw that I'd missed a great deal of the uh, potential of this medium. So I started over again and made a car new cartoon with uh, Mambouche's help and suggestions. An artist doesn't know many times how many beautiful things he can do in a tapestry for his uh, purposes. He doesn't know that uh, with a little change of this sketch, for instance, he will get uh, beautiful results. He change sometimes two millimeters. If you have a sense to a line, you will feel it. The line becomes alive all of a sudden. I know the possibilities in each media which I deal with. So this helps me to uh, help the artist to extract the best results from the media. This uh, close cooperation between the craftsman and an artist goes beyond basic order to an uh, understanding of the textures and colors of uh, tapestry making. It's like learning a, a new palette for a new technique. You like this? Yeah. The artist, by not knowing the difficulties of the media, sometimes suggests things that shocks the craftsman, and he thinks that it's almost impossible to do. But if the craftsman is more ambitious and he really likes art, then he takes it as a challenge and he says, why not try to do almost the impossible? And then by effort and by hard work, he does it. He does it for the artist. And he learns a new thing and then his craft also again. The combination fertilizes the craftsmanship and enriches the knowledge of the craftsman. I think that craftsmanship by itself is very fine, but when it is combined with art, I think it's finer. The final result of this collaboration between art and craft will not be realized for, oh, the better part of a year. Uh, none of us will see more than a glimpse of the tapestry while it's being made. It's uh, rolled on a loom while it's woven. And the uh, weavers work with the tapestry bottom side up, uh, checking their work occasionally uh, with a mirror. To a painter who is used to watching his work grow on canvas, the uh, process of waiting uh, can be a, a frustrating experience. It calls for the artist's full faith in the uh, craftsman and for the craftsman's complete faith in the weavers he has trained. Uh, Mambush inspires this kind of faith because he's so obviously a man who loves the art as well as the craft. He comes here each night when the uh, workshop is empty and the looms are still. I think it's just a, a good feeling to go into the workshop, first of all, and see what, what's going on on the looms, uh, to look uh, on every tapestry, what, what was done, the forms are really nice. I'm not a uh, long time in the workshop. 20 minutes is enough.
I think I, I like to be there, <laughs> that's all. There are many lessons an artist can learn from working with this remarkable man. Perhaps the most important is this. Craft and art need not be distinct from one another. When the best of craft and the best of art are combined, the result is more powerful than the separate talents of either the craftsman or the artist. There is a kind of competition or jealousy uh, between craftsmen and artists. Most of the craftsmen, they think that only the craftsmen understand the material, the medium. Uh, the craftsmen want to be the artist. I uh, think differently, because I think to make a good tapestry, you, uh, you have to cooperate with the artist. The combination, the cooperation between good craftsmanship and good artists are giving the best results. It's not a simple addition. It is giving you a different thing, a new world. It is not craftsmanship by itself. It's not art by itself. It's uh, entirely a higher thing. Perhaps it can't be expressed in words, whatever it is that results from the highest collaboration of art and of craft. But it can be felt by both the artist and craftsman. And it can be seen as it is in the tapestries of Mambouche.